everyone, I welcome you to CEC lecture series. I am Nupur Chavla, teaching English literature at Maitri College, Delhi University. And today's lecture is part of the ongoing series on the English short story. The lecture is titled, James Joyce, The Dead in Dubliners. Now, I am sure that uh, as students of literature, we have uh, very well heard about the author James Joyce who is a very popular, uh, you know, a writer of the uh, modern period, right? And uh, the moment we think about modernism as a cultural and literary movement, you know, some of the authors, uh, you know, by default, if one can say, uh, come to our mind. And uh, Joyce, of course, is uh, one of them. So in today's lecture, we are going to discuss uh, a short story by James Joyce in, uh, you know, what is one of his um, very famous short story collection, the Dubliners, right? And uh, what the story is all about, how does it connect to, uh, you know, uh, what James Joyce, um, you know, otherwise does and the kind of writings that he, uh, you know, has produced otherwise. We're going to talk all of that at length in today's lecture. So first, let's look at a bit about the author Joyce. So James Joyce was born in 1882 and was around till 1941 and he was uh, an Irish novelist, short story writer and a poet. So you see the foremost thing that we see is that he was an Irish. So we might wonder that you know we are talking about the English short story and here we are discussing a writer who is an Irish. So we understand that um, James Joyce, an Irish writer, wrote in English uh, all of his texts, be it the novels, the short stories, or even the poems. And that's why, as we discuss the English short story, we also pick up one of his works. Now you see, he, um, one of his uh, very famous novels that he's um, most popularly known for is the Ulysses, which was written in 1922. The other novel, which is another uh, very popular one, is titled A Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man, that was written in 1914. The Finnegan's Wake was written in 1939. And Dubliners, the short story collection from where today's story has been taken, was uh, written in 1914. So what do we see? That Joyce was a writer who was writing in the early parts of the 20th century. And as students engaging with, you know, this author, we must also understand that what was happening in world at that time when Joyce was writing. So if you look at these years of um, some of his seminal works, we understand that they span around the second decade of the 20th century and of course later. So what is one of the foremost uh, uh, world events that comes to mind that was uh, around at this time? The First World War which was from 1914 to 1918. So we need to understand that Joyce is writing at such a time when there is such a political turbulence that is being witnessed the world over. So if we know a bit more about Joyce, we see that in 1904, which is the fourth year of the 20th century, Joyce moved to Europe with his partner Nora Barnacle. They lived in Trieste, Paris and Zurich. So while he has you know, spent a lot of time in Europe, his fiction is always almost based in Dublin, Ireland, right? The characters are Irish. The issues that he engages with also are importantly belonging to Ireland. And even the setting or the locale, you will notice, is Ireland per se. So even as physically he might have spent a lot of time in different parts of Europe, but his works continue to engage with reality in Ireland. 
The next thing that we say about Joyce is that he was part of the modernist movement and he is a very important writer of the 20th century. If you see on your screens, that's what James Joyce looks like. A very petite, uh, a, a very thin face and quite sharp features. And equally sharp, if we see, was also his writing. But one of the things that we've said is that he's associated with modernism, right? Or he's called as the modernist writer. Now, what does this term mean? Let's look at this definition. M.H. Abrams says, and I quote, the term modernism is widely used to identify new and distinctive features in the subjects, forms, concepts, and styles of literature and other arts in the early decades of the 20th century, especially after the First World War, unquote. So one of the foremost things that we notice about modernism, the cultural movement, is that it identified the new, the distinctive subject, the distinctive forms, new styles. So everything was being rethought and that defines the aesthetic of modernism. The forms in which the authors and different artists were expressing themselves were being rethought, they were being reinvented, novels were written in a new way, the narrative changed form, poetry changed form, the use of language also acquired a new flavor. So this newness and this break from the past is something which is very, very similar to modernism. And if we look at some of the further other features of modernism, these are the first one is that it spells a radical break from the existing basis in art and culture, right? So however the existing tradition in art or culture was, whatever the tradition was, in modernism there is a break from that, right? And that's why the newness as well. The second feature is that it implied a questioning of certainties such as religion, morality, etc. You know, certain things which were taken for certain, which were taken as givens in reality, in society, in thought, such as the idea of religion, the idea of morality, anything that was seen to be a sure, uh, uh, you know, occurrence or a certitude was called into question. So therefore, it means that nothing was sacred anymore and everything was rethought and questioned. A third feature of this movement also was that, you know, modernism represented the dissonant reality of the post-war world. So we understand that with the World War, it spelled a lot of destruction, a lot of upheavals, not only physically, right, but it also shook people's moral grounds. It shook people's value systems. All that they had faith in now came crumbling because nothing made sense, right? And uh, we understand that while this sentiment would be very, very strongly present after the war, but even before the war, when the turmoil must be brewing, these values or these thoughts or these attitudes was somewhere on the horizon. The idea of doubt, the idea of uncertainty, the idea of rethinking, the idea of wanting something new, wanting something different from what already exists. So this was the atmosphere in the early 20th century Europe, right? And that's what, uh, you know, uh, that's the background against which Joyce writes. Uh, we also see that, you know, uh, having noticed the kind of attitudes, the values, the ideas that were uh, prevalent in the early 20th century, we also see that new forms and styles were now needed to represent this reality. 
a reality which uh, uh, which was no longer uniform a reality which was being questioned on a lot of accounts etc so what forms would be uh, suitable to represent such a reality right because we all understand that you know the authors the writers the poets they all respond to their times so when they are responding to their times one wonders that the uh, the form that they adopt to make a point also says a lot about the reality which they choose to represent so therefore uh, experimentation and the idea of fragmentation became quite central to the style of writing in the early 20th century the uh, writers they became very experimental they they uh, took liberties with form and the idea of fragmentation also was quite central there was no uniformity there were breaks for example there were breaks in narratives there were breaks in language there were breaks in thought there were breaks in logic so nothing was this very uh, you know uh, a straight interconnected coherent uh, uh, reality right and all these features then were also seen represented in the writings of the time so that's why from here when we talk about the new forms and styles which were needed to represent this reality another word which becomes very important is the word avant garde which means violating conventions represented themselves as the alienated from the established order and shocking the reader so you see anything any text which was characterized as avant garde had all these features first it violated the conventions right the characters represented themselves as being alienated from the established order alienated means uh, you know disconnected from and also uh, a third feature of such writing was that it would shock the reader right so of course all these um, you know uh, uh, characteristics of what we call as avant garde quite suited the times and the spirit of modernism now if you look at this quotation by t s eliot he summarizes the uh, initial parts of 20th century in his review of ulysses right so he says uh, that james joyce in his book ulysses captures and i quote the immense panorama of futility and anarchy which is the contemporary history unquote important words are panorama of futility and anarchy futility means that uh, something is futile uselessness right anarchy lack of order so uselessness a purposelessness directionlessness and also a lack of order chaos confusion all of these were features according to t s eliot of contemporary history in the early 20th century and that he says joyce captures in his seminal work ulysses which was published in 1922 yet another phrase which is also seen as characteristic of modernism is given by ezra pound that is make it new now the phrase make it new ag- yet again captures the essence of the spirit of the times where experimentation was at the center things were being made new forms were being made new thought processes were being revamped right experimentation was at the center so writers such as james joyce t s eliot gertrude stein virginia woolf marcel proust william faulkner all these are european writers who are then associated with the uh, movement of modernism right so this is very conventionally speaking the backdrop which defines uh, james joyce's works but 
I would say one thing that is it is very very curious that how despite belonging to a time when modernism or which was identified uh, by this cultural movement of modernism and most of uh, Joyce's works also fall uh, uh, into this category or can be discussed as modernist texts but the text which are uh, which is in discussion today is quite different so the short story collection that is Dubliners which he wrote in 1914 does not have all these features that we just discussed about uh, the modernist text so you see um, Dubliners was written in 1914 which is the year when the war actually began so maybe one can say that the um, you know the sense of futility the sense of anarchy the sense of chaos all of that were perhaps they had not yet climaxed in Europe at that point of time because the war had just started so maybe the text that Joyce wrote before the war began which was Dubliners and the ones that he wrote after the war such as Ulysses we see a marked difference in the aesthetic of the two and as students studying Joyce we must know or you know we, are, we must be aware of this spectrum of representation in his works so while Joyce is capable of writing a short story collection as Dubliners which is a lot more naturalistic in style if we can call it that uh, he also has written one of the most complex texts such as Ulysses which is written in the stream of consciousness style right so I would say this also in a lot of ways defines the greatness of this writer as well right now um, I use the word naturalistic what do we mean by naturalism it means that you know uh, it's a uh, um, uh, it's a particular way of representing reality where the author goes into details and whatever is seen or sensed through the senses is depicted in the text right so as true to reality one can say almost a photographic uh, you know engagement with reality that's what naturalism is and this is of course different from realism where realism carries a deeper understanding now, realism will uh, engage with even that which may not be evident in reality right now but it lies in the realm of possibility so all those possibilities will be uh, you know uh, um, dealt with by a text of realism or by a realist text but a naturalist text will only have its eye on the present almost presenting as I just now said a photographic account of reality so it doesn't give us a very complex engagement with reality so what we say then is actually Dubliners uses the naturalistic mode to talk about uh, uh, you know life in Dublin right so if we very quickly uh, look at uh, you know uh, just have an overview of what this short story collection is uh, all about so it was a, uh, a collection of uh, 15 short stories which were first uh, and uh, it was first published in the year 1914 this collection presents a naturalistic depiction of the Irish middle class life in and around Dublin in the early years of the 20th century so the preoccupation of this uh, short story collection is life of Dublin and particularly it's the middle class the Irish middle class that's who uh, you know uh, James Joyce represents in these 15 stories that he writes for this collection and as I just now said that his works are almost always set in Dublin so he can be seen as an author who really brings alive the Irish society he really brings alive the Irish reality in the early 20th century right and we all uh, understand that how 
the culture of Ireland is also as important for us to be acquainted with uh, as is the culture of England, right? Because the two, the histories of the two have always been connected in uh, some way or the other, right? Where of course the England, uh, you know, uh, England is, uh, has been um, or at least historically was uh, at that point of time uh, in a position of advantage. But at the same time, it's important for us to understand the Irish locale, the Irish culture, the Irish society as well. And that is what, you know, uh, James Joyce is invested in. Now, coming to the story that is in discussion today, it is called as the dead. And as the title itself suggests, it is also the last story of the 15 stories which are there in Dubliners, right? So it's the last story in this collection and it seems to do justice to the tenor of the collection overall as well. Now when I say that the story, the dead, seems to do justice to the tenor of the collection, it means that uh, a lot of the elements that one notices in this story, dead, you know, uh, uh, can be seen as a tying together of uh, you know, different aspects of the Irish life that, uh, you know, James Joyce explores in all other stories in this collection. So, in fact, one can say that, you know, each story um, uh, 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 unravels or explores uh, an aspect of um, Irish life, right? And while, of course, uh, it has a very close uh, observation of the society, but at the same time, there are some important ideas also that Joyce grapples with. And that's exactly what makes this collection very, very interesting, right? Now, let's look at, you know, uh, what all uh, um, are the distinctive features of uh, this story. And of course, we will, uh, you know, discuss these features at still more length in the next part of the lecture. The first thing we say about the story is that the characters in the story, they reflect the Irish citizens. Second, people's preoccupations are also revealed in this narrative. Their views about the country are also made known to the reader. The women characters, they stand out as modern. And finally, the story also carries a view on love, right? Love, which is a very complex emotion according to Joyce. So this story then, you know, uh, which is uh, of a considerable length, opens up all these dimensions and very interestingly so, right? And we will of course discuss at length what each of these dimensions uh, imply and how do they unfold in the text. We are going to discuss that in the next part of the lecture. So in this lecture, what we have seen is the, um, the intellectual background of uh, James Joyce. We've said that he is a writer belonging to modernism, which is the uh, intellectual cultural movement of the early 20th century Europe. We discuss some of the features of uh, modernist writing, how fragmentation, experimentation, the idea of alienation, the idea of, uh, you know, uh, making things new, um, the idea of uh, 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 you know, uh, 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 coming up with new forms, etc. All these come to define the uh, spirit of the times and also spirit of this cultural movement, right? Thereafter, uh, as a third point, what we said was that while this forms a very important part of the aesthetic followed by Joyce, but in Dubliners, he departs from it. We do not see Dubliners as a quintessential text of modernist fiction because it has none of this. It is not fragmented. It is not, uh, you know, uh, it, uh, it does not very overtly talk about um, alienation or the feeling of uh, doubt or being disconnected, etc. Right? So one can say, while yes, uh, you know, all these values can be seen in very nascent form in Dubliners. But the modernist features were not seen or were not witnessed in the full-blown form in this uh, uh, short story collection. 
and that is what makes it important for us to study this if we also study other uh, you know uh, uh, works by Joyce that are a lot more modernist than this one is and finally we made the point that we are uh, engaging with the last story of this collection that is called the dead which uh, you know uh, opens up some of the important features of uh, the Irish middle class life and what these features are we're going to discuss it at length in the next part of the lecture thank you